Congressman Biggs, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you, Tony. Good to be with you. Well, you've been, uh, I mean, you've been beating this drum for a while that we need to, we need to take a reasonable look at what's happening and unfolding before us. And our economy is, uh, is, is a serious issue. The unemployment lines that are growing by the day is a very serious issue. And we need to be able, as the president is advocating for, to balance the risk to our health from this virus while at the same time restarting our economy. Yes, that's exactly right. And I, look, I, Tony, if I could put it this way, um, I don't know what authority uh, these governors and mayors have to actually say that somebody's an essential business and somebody's a non-essential business. But what I have seen is Americans um, becoming uh, increasingly oppressed uh, both uh, on the rights side, but also on the economic right side. So we, we've got to recognize that, um, and we've got to basically say it's time to open it up. I think we can do both. I think we can open it up, and I think people will respect it. I trust the American people, and I think that they will be respectful and uh, and make sure that people are safe because uh, they don't want to. They don't want to spread the, it, not just this disease or any disease. I think it's time to do it. Um, as you know, we're, we're probably pushing well over 25 million unemployed today, and I think it's time to uh, to say let's let's get back to work. You just highlighted what I think is a fundamental difference between, and, and I, I hate to go partisan uh, on this, but I, I I just have to. Basically, it is the dividing line, where you said I trust the American people. Well, President Trump has trusted the governors of our country based upon the guidance put out by the CDC to craft a way forward for their states when it came to dealing with the threat of this virus. You said you trust the American people. Republicans tend to trust people to make good decisions. The Democrats, liberals, feel like they have to make decisions for everyone. And we're seeing that right now play out in the states where Republican states kind of lifting the restrictions, allowing people to put in place best practices where the, the Democrats want to keep a lid on everything. Yeah, and, and it, I don't know why that is. I have my theories on that. I, I'm a big believer that that uh, when, you, when you want to expand the size and scope of government, you inherently um, move to a, a, a kind of a uh, this authoritarian type of style of governance whereas if you want to move to freedom you're going to say look let's let's go with this and and the jeffersonian model is let's trust the people i mean jefferson and madison they would always say we're going to trust the american people uh even though uh they might have disagreed and had a different idea of what should happen they always said trust the american people yeah when you look at the um the market i mean you look at business and, of course, that's just a part of uh, reopening. I mean, it's reopening society. I mean, everybody's been basically, uh, you know, in isolation in their homes for 40 days. You know, businesses are going to have to create best practices to convince people it's safe to come back into their establishment. I mean, after people have been locked away for 40 days, they realize there's a problem here, that this virus is a threat. So they're going to be they're going to be very cautious about venturing out. I mean, even I'm, I'm going to sh- share a quote with you from um, – This is Governor Cuomo yesterday in a a press conference. He said, it's one thing for government to say, okay, it's safe to go out. If people don't believe it's safe, they're not going to go. And he's right. Government can't flip a switch and say, everybody go back to normal. But what they can do is allow people to make those decisions based upon what the establishments that they're going to go to, churches, businesses, restaurants, what they do to entice people to come into their doors, assuring them that they're safe. That's how this is going to work. Well, that's exactly right, Tony. I mean, you, what you said, if we unpacked it, there's probably three main points there. Num- number one is that freedom uh, requires accountability, and, and that's really important. We, we don't talk about the accountability portion of that very often. But second of all, um, we've had certain civil rights basically abrogated, like religious freedom. And um, you can't take those rights away. And I, I guess the third thing is the market system itself will determine what businesses are essential and non-essential. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you don't feel safe, 
then you are certainly welcome to stay home and not patronize uh, uh, an establishment that where you don't feel safe. You don't I mean, need somebody I, I, to tell you to do that. That's exactly right. I mean, look, I don't, I don't go to certain establishments because I don't like the product. I don't like what's happening. Whatever it may be, I'm making those decisions. And and if I'm in business and I want to entice you back, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. So if I've got a furniture store, I'm going to say, look, you know, I've got it's a 2,000 square foot furniture store, whatever it may be, and and I feel uh, that we're only going to allow five people in the store plus our two sales uh, personnel. And and we're going to be dressed in, in uh, PPE and whatever. They're going to make the decisions, and I get to make the decision. Right. You know what we call that? That's freedom. Yeah. That's freedom. And, and that's what makes... That's yeah. what makes America an exceptional nation. It's what makes America the envy of the world. We don't have government dictating every step that the American people take. I think, look, I think, and I, I think you would agree, and feel free to disagree with me, but I think the president took the reasonable steps, given the information he had, and I think because he did, he saved the nation from having a, a, you know, a, a much higher death rate than what we did from the coronavirus. But he... Uh, he's been saying this, and I know you're a part of his congressional group to restart America. I think he sees it the same way. All right, it's time to begin opening things back up for business. No, that's right. I mean, first of all, I would say, Tony, it's important to realize that that I can't think of, other than a couple of travel bans, I can't think of too many mandates that the federal government would put on anybody's business and their uh, uh, and their and their basic rights. That, right. that wasn't done by the that wasn't done by the federal government. That was done by state and local yep. governments, and that's where the problem has been. Is they've uh, some of them turn, have turned into petty tyrants, and that's just doggone unfortunate. It, the and president so, has put forth guidance. Exactly, and I think that is a much more responsible way to do it. I mean, you, we've got you, you've got experts, and I agree with some of them. There are there are other experts that disagree with some of those experts. But the point is. He has provided guidelines, not mandates. The states have tried to provide mandates, and that's where the, the rub is in trying to open this up. And so it gets back to another point, not just on the freedom side, but on the federalism side. Um, I'm all for letting the states govern. Let your yeah. governor govern with the legislature. But if you're taking away fundamental rights, um, then I think I appreciate what, what Attorney General Barr said, and I've, I I. I agree with him a lot. I disagree with him some, but I will tell you what he said yesterday is absolutely correct when he said we've got to make sure that these states are not violating people's constitutional rights. Yeah. And um, that's critical to this. So so this is not just something set aside, but I tell you what what makes it easy, Tony, is what you suggested earlier, and I think you're right. If I can if I can go to the grocery store and I can go to the big box hardware store or other big box stores and and with all these people and those stores um, are bas- basically enforcing social distancing to come to their stores. Guess what? People feel safe. They're going in. You could do that at the furniture store, at the hobby store, at the thrift store, whatever, whatever it may be. You can do this, and uh, that way you're protecting both the the public and also the economy. And it's not it's not a binary choice, that's for sure. Yeah, and that's extremely important. And I'm going to talk about that uh, coming up next with Scott Rasmussen, that we don't have to choose one or the other. We, we, we can do both. I mean, as Americans, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And I think what the best approach, and you, you, you touched on this, the best approach is what the president has done in giving guidance to the states. He's given resources to them and said, look, here's the situation. But you know what's best for your community. Well, the governors then need to turn around and take the same approach to the mayors. The mayors need to take the same approach to the businesses in their community. Look, here's the guidelines. You know, you need to keep this distancing. You need to make sure that you have proper sanitation and all of these things. But you know what's best. You know how to serve your congregation, your customers. And I just, I just think they need to back off or they're going to lose the support because people are not going to stay confined for much longer. Right, and that's why you're seeing this nascent movement um, uh, is actually uh, ta- it's actually taken hold, where people are saying, "Look, we need to get out." I mean, I, I saw uh, a sign the other day um, from a rally somewhere, and it said, uh, 
my choice, my body, um, I choose to work, and which is kind of a play on the old uh, pro-choice folks. But I thought it was pretty funny, but I thought also it reflects what so many people are calling me with, saying, I want to work. I want to, I want to open up my business. I, I'm talking to people who are saying, if we, if we wait two more weeks, I am done, even with yeah. PPP, because, yeah. because it's not going to help. And, and that's why I, I keep saying we need to be doing this sooner rather than later. Yeah, I'm hearing um, the same thing all across the country, and it's true. It's time to, uh, time to in a reasonable, fa- safe fashion, open society back up again. Uh, Congressman Andy Biggs, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us this afternoon uh, from Capitol Hill. I know you guys are voting on the, uh, uh, the CARES Act addition, additional funds for the uh, PPP. So we appreciate you joining us this afternoon. My pleasure. Thanks, Tony.